This is KGW News at Sunrise. We begin here at 6 o'clock with a big story here. The smoke has cleared and Portland protests were back overnight. A group returned outside the ICE building along the south waterfront. Protesters were met by federal agents waiting behind a fence. Portland police declared an unlawful assembly just after 9 o'clock, not long after people started gathering there. Now we saw federal officers deploy tear gas to break up the crowd. Portland police say 11 people were arrested. All right, now the other big story. This was the scene across the country overnight. Vigils filled with tears as Americans mourn a pioneer. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg has died from pancreatic cancer at age 87. Thank you for waking up with us here on this Saturday morning. I'm Galen Etlin. Justice Ginsburg spent more than a quarter century on the U.S. Supreme Court in a career guided by the fight for equality. She helped launch the ACLU Women's Rights Project in the 1970s. And in the 1990s, President Clinton named her as the second woman on the highest court in the land. She grew in popularity with a new generation in her 80s, becoming a feminist icon and the high court's most prominent member. She gave her life to expanding rights uh, and understood that the country was at its best when we widened our arms. Justice Ginsburg is survived by her two children, four grandchildren, and one great-grandchild. Now to the latest on the wildfires this morning. Oregonians have never been so excited to see the rain. Storms rolled through yesterday, giving us a good soaking and bringing much-needed relief to firefighters. It also helped to thin out the smoke a little bit. Now, the rain won't be enough to put out those fires, but it is helping. For the first time in days, the smoke cleared enough so that Sky 8 could fly over the Detroit area, showing us some of the damage for the first time. Pat Doris has more about the progress made and the work that's still ahead. Rain fell all over the Northwest today. That's a very good thing if you're fighting fires. It makes a difference in the short term, uh, but rains like that are both a blessing and a curse. Holly Craik is talking about the scorched earth left behind by the Riverside fire. I saw it myself Thursday when I got a quick tour with Sheriff Craig Roberts. Nearly all the green here is gone. There's a much bigger chance of landslides now. The sheriff told me this is the worst thing to hit Clackamas County in his lifetime. For a number of reasons, it's because of the scope, uh, we're talking mass, uh, a part of our county. We're also talking way more citizens. I remember at the town center, we were looking at 10,000. I thought that was a lot at that time, but that's nothing compared to really the volume of people that we're having to do deal with in this situation. And it's far from over. ODOT crews are working to clear Highway 224 east of Estacada. The fire sent huge logs onto the roadway along with piles of rocks. The work has a long way to go. The highway remains closed. In the forest, the rain will cool fires in some places, but not everywhere. So there are uh, duff layers where the fire is still burning two feet deep, and this rain isn't gonna saturate that. To the southeast, timber crews Thursday cut burned and dangerous trees along Highway 22, which also remains closed in many areas. And farther south, we're now seeing images of the red sky, smoke and fire closing in on the Leeburg fish hatchery along the Mackenzie River. The local utility opened the dam to keep down trees from snagging on the gates, but it also forced the release of a million salmon, steelhead and trout into the river. And while this day has brought some relief with the rain, it also brings new dangers, lightning, which can easily start forest fires. In southwest Washington, the Big Hollow Fire burns east of Cougar and Yale Lake. The weary sounding Washington State Lands Commissioner talking about lightning summed up the feelings of many in the Northwest. I've got resources that are very, very stretched and stretched thin. And right now, I'd love to put this fire season behind us. It's already been a very long season, and it's not over yet. Pat Doris, KGW News. I know the good news for a lot of you out there, including myself. We're finally breathing fresher air this morning. Meteorologist Chris McGinnis joins us now with a first look at our forecast. What's the outlook, Chris? Well, good morning, uh, Galen. It is a lot easier to breathe out there this morning, and I'm happy to tell you that that will be the case as we go through the day today for most of the Willamette Valley and a good chunk of Western Oregon as well. Live look outside right now with our Wells Fargo, or excuse me, our Rose City Sky Camera shows, uh, well, it's still dark and a little, little foggy out there as well. Visibility right now at Portland International, pretty good. But as we go down towards Aurora, 
McMinnville and Salem. There are some fog pockets. And in fact, Aurora at the airport still registering some smoke uh, there as well. So we're not done completely with the smoke. There are still some pockets of that, but it has been greatly reduced by the rainfall from yesterday. 59 right now, PDX, 59 Vancouver. And uh, as we go down into the Lamont Valley, we're 57 in Salem and 57 Almsville. And the plan for our Saturday features lots of clouds, a few sun breaks, and uh, daytime highs getting up to about 70. We still keep the shower chance in the forecast today, Galen. I do have sunshine back in our forecast tomorrow. We will see blue sky on Sunday, and I think a lot of us would appreciate that as well. More on that coming up in just a bit. It feels like it's been too long, Chris. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Now in Marion County, some evacuation orders are now downgraded. Mill City and Gates are now at level two. Detroit, Idana, and Brighton Bush, though, are still at level three. Evacuation downgrades do sound promising, right? But people in those areas still need to be ready to leave again. The Lions Head and Beachy Creek fires nearby have burned more than 380,000 acres so far combined. Well, the challenge for a Southern Oregon winery involves more than just smoke tainted grapes through all of this. The Alameda fire destroyed all but one bottle of wine. Our Keely Chalmers explains how the Oregon community is now stepping in to help. The berries are all in good, clean conditions. At Willamette Valley Vineyards in Turner. Everything is very clean. The smoky air is certainly top of mind, which is why these days most of the operations are happening inside. As crews run the bottling line and clean out the cellars, winemakers assess the quality of the fruit. Here we have Maddie who's actually has taken samples from the vineyard of our Pinot Gris and Chardonnay. The smoke has proved a bit of a challenge for the vineyard, but folks here say they're lucky. We don't foresee any significant impact. Because they know their friends down south were not. No, we lost everything. Brian Denner and Clea Arthur lost their winery and all their grapes when the Alameda fire swept through talent last week. And it was worse than I could have ever imagined because um, honestly it was 10 minutes later we were frantically evacuating with our neighbors and our tenants who live in a house. People who were just running for their lives, literally, and just leaving stuff behind. This is all that's left of Simple Machine Winery. You can just see piles of metal rings and just um, exploded bottles. And, and much of the town. It's just ashes and foundations, and it's it's not one or two, it's, it's blocks and blocks and miles of homes. They thought all was lost until fellow wine growers near and far started donating space, equipment, and lots of grapes. And then within, you know, 48 hours, we're like, okay, we're going to make wine this year. Providing fruit to a friend is something we can do and allows them to keep going. Willamette Valley Vineyards, is one of them. So we're planning on uh, donating a ton of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. That's equivalent to 130 cases of wine that people are already pre-purchasing on the winery's website, giving this small and simple machine a chance to rebuild and grow again. This whole process, it's, it's, it's obviously tragic, but it, it's also brought together the community in, in a way that's that's really, really inspiring. With their help, you know, we're, uh, we're on the, the path to in Turner, Keeley Chalmers, KGW News. Wishing them so much luck. Well, still to come here, college move-in day during a pandemic. Students at OSU welcome back to campus with a mandatory COVID-19 test. We'll hear from students when we come back.